Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Modern News. It's a pretty slow week this week, so let's just get right into it. The first news story this week, it looks like there's somebody working on an N64 Blue Retro adapter, basically a single controller Blue Retro adapter for the N64. It's kind of cool too, it looks kind of like the controller plug for the N64. It's got the same shape there. They also have a poll here for what colors people want to see for these adapters. I think gray looks pretty cool. So this adapter should support all the current Blue Retro features, such as connectivity with all Bluetooth controllers, rumble, as well as as memory pack support. I think the only downside here is you need one of these adapters per controller port versus if you were to build out your own Blue Retro adapter, you could connect one Blue Retro adapter to four of the controller ports. Still, I think this might be a good option for people who don't want to put together their own Blue Retro adapter. They might be able to get one of these and skip having to put one together. Next, we have some pretty big news about the PS1 Mr. Core. It seems like the SPU or the sound processing unit, I guess, is feature complete now, which means that all sound effects should be working in that Mr. Core. Currently, it's only working on the dual SD RAM, but as an FPG is hopeful that the single SD RAM version will be working soon. I'm not sure how many more features are left for this Mr. Core. It's come such a long way this year and last year. It's really awesome for the Mr. community. Next, Reventlo showed off a 3D printed replacement top shell for the GameCube. It's actually pretty cool looking. It supports the original jewel in the middle there, as well as the original buttons. It's even going to have a spot for the SD card for a GC loader. So that's pretty cool. You won't have to open any doors to access the SD card. I think that's kind of the whole point of this is to remove a bunch of the wasted space now that you don't need to have a lid at the top. And I think there's space for a huge fan underneath here. So we might be able to have a larger fan inside to provide some better cooling for the GameCube. This is still a work in progress so follow Reventlo here on Twitter. I'm sure I'll have another announcement if he has something for sale but if you want to follow the progress you can see it on Twitter. Speaking of GameCube shells, Noble from Gamebox Systems actually mentioned in my Twitter that they're working on an updated version of their ModCube shell. The original ModCube shell is a replacement shell for the GameCube that allows you to play full-size DVDs in your GameCube assuming you have a mod chip. So you don't have to look for those smaller rewritable discs to burn games onto, you can just use a normal size DVD. Anyways, this newer version of the ModCube shell will have a space for the SD card for the GC loader as well. This also is a work in progress, so as soon as they let us know how much this is gonna cost and maybe the final form of this thing, I'll be sure to update everyone. And lastly, let's talk about another announcement from Gamebox. They just announced this GBHD Advance, which is a Game Boy Advance consoleizer. So right off the bat, you're probably thinking, do we need a third consoleizer for the Game Boy Advance? I say the more the merrier, and especially coming from Gamebox, they tout that their HDMI core is really awesome, so I'd like to get my hands on one of these and check the compatibility with all of my TV monitor and capture cards. This case mock-up looks really awesome too. It's not just a normal size square or rectangle. It's got some shape to it too, which I think is awesome. If you look at the features, on paper here, it's on par with the other consoleizer offerings. Double frame buffer, no clock crystal modifications, so that's interesting. It uses the original Game Boy Advance clock. Two different video modes, so no 1080p, but there's 720 and 480p. Linear and non-linear scaling options. Gamma correction, which is good. Actually, we'll have to see how they implement it because I've seen different versions from both the Game Boy Advance consoleizer or the GBHD actually can be too bright on a normal monitor. So hopefully they allow you to adjust the gamma down so that it's not too bright. Pixel smoothing, which is an option that I don't really use, but it's cool that it's available here. No word on pricing or additional features or how difficult this would be to put together. However, they did reassure us in the Discord channel that this would be available as a kit. Hopefully, if you wanted to DIY this Game Boy Consoleizer from Gamebox, you should be able to buy a kit and put everything together yourself. Now it makes sense why they're trying to discontinue the Game Boy Color Consoleizer kits. That's a little bit more of a niche product. I don't think as many people are going to want just a Game Boy Color Consoleizer versus the Game Boy Advance Consoleizer that you could play both Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games on. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these because I'm excited to compare it to the other consoleizer offerings. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.